150 million years ago, in what will become the Morrison Formation, you can find some of the most famous dinosaurs, from the huge sauropods like the Plodocus and Brachiosaurus, to the spiked Stegosaurus, and even the agile Dryosaurus. One family you might not expect to see are the Armandonosaurs, and yet you can find some of their earliest ancestors living amongst the Jurassic giants. Mimora pelta is one of the two species of nodosaur found in this area. At 3 meters long and 400 kilograms, they are short but stocky herbivores that feed on low-lying plants. This female is grazing alone in a slightly more open areas of the forest. Mimora pelta have poor eyesight and can be easily startled, so most animals give them plenty of space. This also means that if a predator can approach from downwind, they can easily get the jump on them. And one such predator is doing just that. Watching her prey from the cover of the trees is the female Ceratosaurus. Her distinct facial scar, one of the last things many small dinosaurs see. She has never killed a Mimora Pelta before, their tough armor making their hide almost impenetrable. Still, this one is all alone and completely unaware of her, so now might be the perfect time to try her luck. Instead of charging the Mimora Pelta, she steadily walks out of cover and circles it, getting closer and closer, until the herbivore's capable nose picks up her scent. Detecting danger, the Mimora Pelta stops feeding and turns its head towards the predator. She is close enough for her to fully identify the Ceratosaurus and instantly goes on the defensive. She lets out a loud call and then swings her tail back and forth through the air, a warning of what the predator would have to deal with if it got too close. The Ceratosaurus herself isn't particularly phased. She is too far away for the herbivore's tail to hit her, and the Mimora Pelta are slow moving, and it was unlikely the herbivore would charge her. In fact, this is exactly what she wanted. The Mimora Pelta's attention all on her. She shifted her gaze to directly behind the nodosaur, and saw her mate cautiously approaching its rear. The Mimora Pelta was fixed on the Ceratosaurus in front of her, and when her nose picked up the scent of something behind her, it was already too late. Right as she turned her head around, the male Ceratosaurus grabbed her tail in its jaws and wrenched her backwards. The Mimora Pelta was forced to the ground, and every time she tried to stand, the male pulled her back again, giving her no chance to right herself. The female Ceratosaurus moved forward and planted one foot on the herbivore's shoulders, now pinning her to the ground. While the male held the dangerous tail in place, the large carnivore then proceeded to bite the Mimora Pelta's back, but these were testing bites to see how strong the armor really was. She tried different angles and different parts of the back, but it seemed that the herbivore's armor was too tough for her, and using the full force of her bite might break her teeth. The Mamora Pelta kept trying to wriggle free or pull its tail from the male Ceratosaurus's jaws, but the predators had her secure. However, they hadn't figured out her weakness, and as the female Ceratosaurus pointlessly bit her hard osteoderms, it was likely the predators would simply get bored after a while. The scarred face hunter grew annoyed, and this time goes for the head. Though the Mimora Pelta has armor in this region, it is thinner, and the sensation of having large teeth sink into her face and saliva covering her eyes and ears, the Mimora Pelta begins to panic. If the Ceratosaurus can bite hard enough in the right place, she may be able to kill the herbivore. Then, a loud, gurgling bellow is heard in the distance. Both the Ceratosaurus lift their heads and turn to see the source of the sound. Trotting through the low-lying ferns comes a Gargalayosaurus. This is another early nodosaur, very similar to Mimora Pelta, but this one is going right towards the two predators while making a series of loud and annoying noises. The Ceratosaurus duo stares at the approaching Gargalayosaurus in stunned silence. Out of nowhere, a short, round, and odd-sounding herbivore is charging them. It's not until it gets close and then tries to slam itself into the leg of the male Ceratosaurus that the pair realize the potential danger. The sharp spines on the nodosaur's sides could easily puncture flesh and even topple over the large hunters. The male dodges the herbivore's attacks, but the angry ball of spines keeps turning around and charging. The female watches her mate avoid the annoying creature, with the struggling Mimora Pelta still under her foot. 
This hunt has gone downhill very quickly, and her chance to figure out these armoured herbivores' secrets has slipped away. She lifts her foot off the Mimora Pelter and barks at her mate, and while avoiding the still angry Nodosaur, they disappear back into the forest. The Mimora Pelter stood and shook herself. She was mostly uninjured, but had come close to death and was fortunate that the Ceratosaurus hadn't learned to flip her over and attack her unarmed underside. She was just getting her bearings when the Gargulliosaurus that had unwillingly saved her life suddenly started charging her. She turned tail and ran as fast as her short legs could carry her. This male was clear in the area of all potential threats, so that he could impress any females that wandered by, and that meant the Mimora Pelter had to go. She ran until the angry male stopped chasing her, and paused to catch her breath. What a morning. Life was hard in the late Jurassic, even for one as hardy as herself. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the first notosaurs, Mimora Pelta. Mimora Pelter was originally discovered in the Morrison Formation, Utah, in 1990. Its name is a combination of the two people who discovered the quarry it was found in and the Greek word Pelter, which means shield. It was an early nodosaur that lived in the late Jurassic between 155 and 150 million years ago. Now for the record, the clay Ankylosauria contains two families, Ankylosauridae and Nodosauridae. Ankylosaurs had the signature tail clubs and evolved in the late Cretaceous, while nodosaurs lacked tail clubs and were around since the late Jurassic. For a nodosaur, Mimora Pelter was rather small, measuring around 3 meters in length, standing 1 meter tall, and weighing between 300 and 560 kilograms. It was a low browser, feeding on ferns, shrubs, and cycads, while the sauropods it lived alongside took the role of high browsers. It may have been a picky eater, as its snout was narrow and not flat like in grazing or bulk feeding animals. The preservation of cheek plates on other species shows that nodosaurs did indeed have cheeks and could chew their food, and that they likely used their tongues to maneuver food into their mouths as opposed to biting off chunks with their beaks. The skull was triangular in shape and had two horns pointing backwards from the brow, and another two pointing backwards from the bottom of the cheeks. Across its upper body are five different types of armour or osteoderms, elongated spines, thin triangular plates with asymmetrical base, small blade-like spines of a rounded base, isolated flat kneeled scutes, and scutes fused into a single plate of armour. These different types of armour would have been excellent defence against predators, in fact, the animal might have simply laid on the ground keeping its legs under its body and let the predators attack it till the aggressor got bored or realised it couldn't break through its defences. With that in mind, one Mimora Pelter was found to have bite marks from a predatory dinosaur on it. While both Ceratosaurus and Allosaurus fossils are present in the same area, the bite marks come from a carnivore larger than either of these predators, likely a Torvosaurus. Whether the Mimora Pelter was hunted or was scavenged after death, however, isn't known, but at three meters, I don't think Mimora Pelter was completely immune from attack. The long tail of Mimora Pelter was also armored, with small scutes and a line of spines down each side. A study in 2022 suggests that this evolved for intraspecific combat, such as males competing for territory, and that it was used as a defensive weapon against predators secondarily. Like others of its family, its legs were short, with the forelimbs bearing most of the weight. However, they may have also been adequate diggers, using their front limbs to get at roots. Even for nodosaurs, Mimora Pelter's limbs were short, meaning that it was probably sluggish, and though it might have been capable of running, it likely resembled a brisk trot as opposed to a gallop. The Morrison Formation is one of the most fossil-rich and well-researched areas in the world, However, Mimora Pelter has only been found in two sites. This could be due to them preferring specific types of plants that only grow in some areas. Either way, we only have a few fossils of Mimora Pelter, with some other finds in other parts of the country being attributed to the species, but not confirmed. 
It was one of the forerunners of Ankylosauria, a family that would produce many different species that no doubt owe their success to early nodosaurs from the late Jurassic. But what do you think of Imora Pelta? Which lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, thank you for watching.